Hello everyone, in this short video I want to share with you a little design I made in Fusion 360 that can help you to uh, facilitate the setting of the work distance for your laser. If you look on the OptLaser website in the section User Manuals, you will find a paragraph that talks about setting the work distance. The aim of the procedure is to cut a series of lines and each line is cut with a slightly different height of the laser above the cutting surface. If the laser is at the correct focus point, the resulting line will be the thinnest line possible. If the laser is set higher than the ideal focus point, the resulting line will be thicker and that will also be the case when the laser is set too low. So by cutting a series of lines where the laser goes down step by step, you can find the optimal focus distance by looking at the smallest line that you have in such a series of cuts. Now the procedure uh, describes a coarse adjustment and a fine adjustment. The difference in cutting height between two lines in the coarse adjustment is set at uh, one millimeter and in the fine adjustment that is reduced to 0.1 millimeter. And by doing first a coarse adjustment, you can find the approximate correct value and then do the procedure again with a fine adjustment to further zoom in on the absolute optimal um, focus distance. One way to do this is to make a simple toolpath that cuts a parallel series of lines. And then in the G-code for each line that you want to cut, you manually alter the Z height. What I did here in Fusion 360 is I made a design with a series of lines that goes from a high Z value to a low Z value. And I made it parametrically so that you can alter the uh, slope angle of the lines and also the distance between two lines and also the length of each line. So if I go into the parameters, for example, what I could change here is the horizontal spacing here Horizontally, each line will be five millimeters from the other. I can, for example, alter that to 10, and then the lines will be further apart. But let's bring it back to five. More importantly, you can change the vertical spacing. Here it is set to one millimeter as described in the course adjustment on the OptLaser website. But if you want to use it for fine adjustment, you can reduce that to 0 0.1 millimeter. And then you will see that the angle is dramatically reduced. For now, I will bring it back to one millimeter. And as far as this component here is concerned, which is now not visible, when I switch on the visibility, you will see that that is just a block of material that I made to have something available for me when uh, making toolpaths for this uh, series of lines. Also, the stock, by the way, will update parametrically when uh, you change the basic parameters. So when you change, for example, the length line from 30 millimeters to 50 millimeters, the piece of stock has adapted accordingly. By the way, the parameters that you want to play with are only the horizontal spacing, the vertical spacing and the number of lines which are required to be an odd number. The other parameters are parameters that I created to do in between calculations and you don't need to change them. Now, when I go over to the manufacturing workspace, you will see that I already prepared everything you need to uh, make toolpaths to cut such a series of lines. Now, the aim here is not to cut a pattern of lines on an angled surface. They will in reality be cut on a horizontal surface However, by drawing lines in the design that differ in Z height, you will force the laser cutter to descend slightly with each consecutive line that it is cutting, which will result in the required test pattern as described on the OptLaser website. And I will show you that in the simulation in a minute or two. Now, if you walk over to the manufacturer workspace, you will see that I have two series of toolpaths already created for you. Now, the first one called the X direction 
we'll make sure that the pattern is burned along the x-axis and the y-direction toolpath will make sure the pattern is burned along the y-axis. And that allows you to choose, of course, the direction of cutting. So you can choose which one you want. You can also do the calibration once in the x direction and once in the y direction and hopefully you will get the same results. So let's pick out the x uh, direction and I will simulate this toolpath first just in a 3D view and you see the laser nicely follows the lines and I will do it again uh, viewed from the side and then you will see that the laser will go down slightly for each line and that is exactly what we want. The only thing left to do now is uh, go to actions and go to a post process. Make sure the correct post processor is selected. For more information on toolpaths and post processors, please refer to uh, part four of my series on PCB making, where I go more into detail on toolpathing and, uh, and post processing. But for now, I will just give the toolpath a name. I will just call it test pattern and I will hit um, post. As explained also in my part four video on my channel, I would add here an M3 command and then I would save out the file. And what that should give you is give you a test pattern just as described on the Uplaser website, but without you having to alter the G code manually and with the benefit of changing the design parameters where you can change the number of lines that you want where you can also change their horizontal spacing and more importantly also their vertical spacing which allows you to make coarse and fine calibration toolpaths. So thanks for watching and see you on the next one. Happy lasering! Bye bye!